Hello and welcome to the show. I am Donnie. And I'm Nick. And today we're rambling about landscapes. And uh, we're in a pretty good spot today for landscapes for our area anyway. Yeah, get the little sunglasses on today yep. for sure. Yeah. Might even catch a sunset in the, the podcast. We'll see. That would be sweet. And that's, I've brought the camera, got it set up. As you can see here, it is, uh, I'll turn this off a little bit. Set up slightly different than what we had for the burden. Uh, totally different lens set up. And I guess we can talk about it a bit. A bit about that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess pretty much 50 50 of our photography and stuff is landscape and others like wildlife, right? So yeah, for sure. It, it for makes sure. sense that we uh, hit upon the landscape photography. Yeah. And I think like the rule of thumb is definitely like the nicer the day looks out, outside, worse it is for landscapes, well, really. Yeah, yeah. Like if it's a just sunny day, not a cloud in the sky, that's a pretty bad landscape photography day for the most part. And like, I don't know, today's like, pretty well perfect for like sunset you got like a little bit of clouds on the horizon there and uh nice like seascape i guess you'd call this yeah. and then uh got some foreground uh driftwood got a little bit of everything oh, it's here it's always nice a bit of driftwood yeah uh yeah like you're saying you don't a nice beautiful bright blue sky day is fantastic to be out in you'll get some nice snaps per yeah. se but whenever you're trying to create an image it's really not going to be beneficial to you yeah the light's too sharp and it just creates shadows on everything Right. It's kind of the, the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, like I said, it, it's a lot of times it's hard to judge at the minute. Uh, it's not bad because the clouds are a little bit more predictable. Mm -hmm. Whatever you see in the sky is going to remain just because the temperature. Mm -hmm. But as we get further into the summer, you'll find it. You'll th even think, oh, look at those clouds, look really nice. I'll go and set up for a landscape. Yeah. So you know, you'll drive west or whatever. Go go and find one of your more westerly uh, scenes that you've even had in mind. But the clouds will dissipate very that, quickly. Yeah, that, that's that's the sort of thing you have to watch for. You know, it may look nice at one point, even within 15 minutes mm -hmm. of getting there. Once you get into the summer months, the clouds are going to go away. Yeah. You're very rarely going to have a, a a good cloudy image uh, yeah. to try and try and paint any kind of picture. Yeah, lots of unpredictability, especially. Yeah. Uh, like the other day, we we're talking about the aurora there. Yeah. Pla planned it. The numbers looked great. Drove two hours out to the pinery and uh, absolutely nothing. Yeah. But uh, that's like I think we've been skunked by that numerous times Too now. Many times. Yeah. I'm never, I don't ever, ever see it again. Yeah. And anyone who's listening who's not from around here, uh, we're like the most southern part of Canada. Like where we are sitting right now, we're what in line with like uh, northern California, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. Port is it Spain and Portugal and the. Uh, on your neck of the woods, some, <laughs> uh, maybe is it Rome, Italy, or something somewhere in Italy as well? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, like it, it's weird to say like when you're in uh, Michigan, uh, we're south of Michigan, right. so yeah. it's kind of kind of odd. Yeah. So like we're talking about Northern Lights, so trying to chase it. I, I've been looking for it for 25 years. Yeah. Still waiting to see that tear. Yeah. yeah. So 25 years ago was the first time I saw it, and uh, I honestly thought it was aliens coming. Yeah. But are 15, 16 years old and. I was uh, coming back from a buddy's house and uh, went down my driveway, put my bike in the in the shed, and then I look up and sort of start seeing this green haze in the sky. I'm, yeah. And I sort of wipe the eyes and I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I'm definitely seeing this. So I was seeing this really clear with the naked eye. Now, obviously, growing up in Northern Ireland, we are a whole lot more north than here. Mm -hmm. So even when we go to Algonquin, we're still not anywhere near as north as what I would be. Uh, our biggest problem back home is typical cloud cover. Uh, it's very rare to have a... Uh, a, a night where you're getting the clear skies and the roar, so to get everything to come together is, is rare in, in Northern Ireland. Mm. But when you do get it, it can be phenomenal and it can be really vibrant. But that that night I seen it. Actually, I want to check my emails. When I'll go home because I sent sent him like getting the, I woke tried to wake my buddy. I called him on his cell phone and he mumbled at me and then <laughs> hung up. Right, didn't even so I go and wake my dad up. This is like one in the morning or something. And I wake him up, like, oh, you got to come and see this. He, he's rolling his eyes, like, what are you doing here? And, oh, showing this here, green ends. Like, oh, yeah, very good. He didn't know what it was and went back to bed. So I went and emailed uh, the Greenwich Observatory in, in England. And uh, some professor got back to me the next day, stating his excitement. Oh, you've, you've got to see the Northern Lights and that there. So ever since then, I've kind of been hooked on them, wanting to see yep. them again. And I've, since then, I've got into photography. Yeah. But... You moved to the wrong spot. Wrong, I should have just stayed home, eh? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so they, yeah, there's a lot of planning goes in. We've got apps and things that help you, yeah. but they can only do so much, right? Yeah, it's like uh, all of landscape photography is really like a luck. Like, yeah. uh, the, like the, they can't even get the weather tomorrow, right. let alone 
weeks in advance, so you can't really plan out, oh, we're going to go shoot the Aurora a month from now. Right. There's no way that's happening. Uh, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's happened to some lucky <laughs> person, but not <laughs> us. <laughs> and then, uh, well, that's obviously it's further north. You go up here in Manitoba yeah, Alaska and there, or some, yeah. some of the, the, the territories there. You've got a good chance. Yeah. Of, you know, and if you're there, if we went and lived up north for a prolonged length of time, we're going to get it. Yeah. It's just living here and sort of trying to shoot to go and get it. You're you're never going to get it. And that's like you say, with most landscapes, I think every every sunset, or, or, no, every scene has got its own story to tell. Yeah, uh, it's it's up to us to sort of to, to produce that story. Sometimes, like I said, it's not going to be the the nice dramatic skies. Or when somebody says, oh, I saw the sunset, did you get photos of it? Okay, but my story is different to your story. Mm -hmm. you know? So what somebody else sees, it's our, it's our translation of what, yeah. what we see. Yeah. Um, and they, we are at the point where there's certain elements that we're looking for, where other people, somebody might be happy enough just to see a big yellow blob go yeah. down on a blue sky. You know, uh, For me, I'm not really overly <laughs> excited about that, no. but other people are. Uh, and some people will shoot something else. Some, somebody might like to just then see somebody walking along the promenade with an ice cream, a couple walking yep. their dog, whatever. And if they capture that, you know, it's, a, it's a different type of scene, it's a different type of photography. Yep. But at the same time, it's still taking elements off the land uh, mm -hmm. and using it for, for their image. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool too. It's like, I know some people that hate going to photograph landscapes with other people because they're always worried about everyone getting the same shot right but like i've been photographing with 10 people and every single person comes home with a completely different shot That's and it's it. it's uh i don't know it's like you said it's like it's the image is a image is in the eye of the beholder what is it How, what's the well beauty is in the eye of the beholder but we're going with image this no, time you're, right? you're, 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 you're <laughs> i changed image. it up yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> you can make whatever you say whatever you want yeah. it's rambling yeah. uh no and, 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 and that's it you know there is some people who'll maybe go with you and they'll try to recreate what you're creating yeah it's pointless you know yeah like, and i guess part of that is some of it is how you're going to take your image uh, if you use, like good cell phones now will take a good landscape photo oh yeah but if you and i both took the same with our auto settings on our phone it's going to be pretty much the same mm -hmm. um it's when you get that bit further a bit more advanced and your processing your processing and, and then changing settings to yep. create a bit of an image before you even get it home and then, like I say, the processing is just then creating something. For me, it's um, there's a feeling. So whenever you're out here, you know, oh, it's a nice day. You know, there's there, your, your feet, you've got, you've got feels, mm, right? So yeah. wh whatever you're feeling is part of the image. Yep. So whenever you get that, whenever I go home, the camera never gets that. So the processing of the f the the, the file, you're trying to continue that feeling ex on exactly. Really. So like a lot of times, I'll go home and do a bit of editing, and then walk away from it because. It's too. I'm too connected to the mm -hmm. most recent experience, and then I'll, I'll come back and say, "No, I didn't really." And then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll edit it a little bit until I start to get back. Oh, that's how I felt. Yep. And you have to then try and translate that to anybody who's looking at your image. Mm -hmm. uh, you're wanting them to feel something, uh, and it could be any kind of feeling. You know, it could be a good feeling, bad feeling. You know, it depends what you're you're taking photos of. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're trying to stir emotion. Mm -hmm. um, so it, there, there, there's a lot goes in the landscape that's not just necessarily taking a picture of what your eyes sees. Yeah. Right? And like the reality is like a lot of people hate, uh, they always say, oh, it's a Photoshopped image. But the reality is, uh, sorry to break to everyone yeah. who's listening, uh, every Milky Way shot you've ever seen is uh, not what your eye really sees. No. Every Northern Light shot is not what your eye sees. The uh, A camera can absorb way more light than we can ever see. Right. So it's like, that's another question. Like ever since like was last summer or the summer before the when you really started getting, in, getting into like the Astro kind yeah. of side. Well, I've been doing like, I've done star trails and things like that yep. there, you know, and people don't understand that either. You know, for a number of years, but doing the Milky Way, I've only ever done the Milky Way down around this way. I've done it back home a couple of times, just in the travels, but still not really going for the sort of deep sky of it. Yep. Uh, so yeah, in the last last year and a half, probably two years, I've been really trying to get yep. go, go places to shoot it to try and get that high. Can, can we even really call it astrophotography though? Or is it more of like a nightscape? Because I, I now that think it after we met Josh, yeah, I think uh, for sure I just do nightscape photography. He does astro. Well, yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> and again, that's layers of photography, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd still say that's astro, but it definitely is more of nightscapes. Yeah. Uh, I think once you start really getting into the star parts of it, and then and his, his, you could really just say it's deep sky astro, yeah. right? No, it's it's. He, I honestly think he just has the Hubble in his backyard. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. And there, listen, there, yeah, there's a couple of guys who do that around here, and there's you no know, obviously people who are more into astronomy. Yep. Who then that bug really bites them, and they go for that. But yeah, the stuff we do, it would be more nightscape. It's yep. uh, 
where it's pretty much what you're seeing with your eye and, and then making an image with what you can see with your eye. Mm -hmm. uh, the deep sky is stuff where you're really penetrating as much light mm -hmm. as possible, trying to absorb light over longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. I think the, the nightscapes is definitely where like my passion lies the most is like uh, is wandering around the, the woods at night and <laughs> listening where, to the noises of animals chasing you. Yeah, yeah. It's I just, think and that's the thing too, it's like growing up, it's like uh, that's kinda what got me into like learning nature too, is like at night you're always like, Oh, what's that noise? Right. Like you, you yeah, don't know what aware. it is. And then uh, now it's like you can walk through the woods. Other than that one time we were in Algonquin, we were like couldn't figure out that noise to this day. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's like uh, you can usually kinda pick you kinda have right. an idea on what just about every noise is in the woods now yeah so that's like uh I, don't know, I always like the the creepiness of walking in the woods at night the unknown right and then you you come out to somewhere clear and you look up at the stuff like it's a everyone has to experience that yeah looking it, at a clear sky at night is uh it really is insane it, it, it's totally different like, you no know, there is obviously quite a in this area there's a bit of complaints about light pollution that we're surrounded one side detroit michigan so there's a yeah. lot of light pollution We've got greenhouses now so tons of pollution to the east and then south we're into Ohio. Yeah. So even though we can't really see it as much uh, initially, when you start taking photos, the, it looks like the, daylight. Yeah, the, <laughs> south, the south there really does light up. So although there is a couple of you know, dark sky preserves in this area, there really aren't dark skies. Mm -hmm. uh, from my house, I can get a pretty decent sky. You know, whenever I look up, I can see a pretty decent amount of stars. It looks pretty nice. But whenever you go up north, when you hit, hit Algonquin, yeah. wherever there's less, you know, you're in the middle of nothing for, for such a long time you can see a little bit of light nearly everywhere along the horizon but whenever you look up it's, it's the, the amount of stars you it, see it, just, it literally sparkles yeah it like really it does is, yeah. it is crazy and it's like you can just lay there and look up for i, don't know, I can do it all night it's, yeah. it's amazing no, no, it is good uh and with that because i'm taking the nightscape photos in it's just learning again another level of yes camera settings that you're really not going to be able to do with any sort of phone no whenever if you want to do nightscapes you're really going to have to get into equipment that that allows you to do it rather than something just, with manual settings yeah you've got you got to be able to take you no know, absorb more light for longer periods of time mm -hmm. steadied on a tripod that kind of thing um but it's it's not unreachable you know mm -hmm. Uh, when you see, see the deep sky stuff, you know that that's if you're going to take that side of things that's seriously. That's a learning curve. Yeah, in and itself, that's that's, for like, sure. that, that's really just you have to put money into it. Yeah, you know, there's no way around that. That that that's really. Yeah, you only that, get to a certain point with uh, everything. Get to a certain point with the your phone camera shooting the Milky Way, barely see it. Yeah. Then you go to DSLR or mirrorless, and it's your next step. And then after that, it's like uh, the full tracker and all that, right. and it's. Uh, and after that, you're you're building satellites. <laughs> yeah, exactly, pretty much. You know, everything. It's it's it really is geared. It's a, it's pretty much a telescope. Yeah. Uh, with a recording device on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. We talk about that in their first ramble. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really off for us. You know, photography is our passion, and we we dabble in a lot of stuff. You know, some of the things we do take a bit further mm -hmm. and, uh, and go. But I think we're more sort of all rounded. You know, there's like we're 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 decent at going out and doing the wildlife, doing the landscape, doing yep. a bit of night sky stuff. Um, and at times we'll, we'll invest a little bit more time and money into some other things, but that's where it's going to be good when we'll have some guests on mm -hmm. here where they, they do have the passion and investment and time and money yep. in, into some of the other things, which will be interesting because you know, we, we find these people interesting, so uh, that'll be good to have later on. Um, but yeah, so some, something like this tonight, you know, this, this is sort of gearing up to be quite nice. Yeah. Uh, Right it's, now we're in the golden hour too, which yeah, is like prime landscape time. Yeah, exactly, you, you can do a lot with this light here. I don't know, it's 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 painting everything around us with a nice golden golden hue. So the shadows are nice as well. I know you, you, the, the the lights in the darks. You know you want to start playing with things like that there. Uh, this 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 is the perfect time for that. And then even that after sunset. You know, for for the, the purpose of this, it's not very good because we're mm. recording. But probably just look like a silhouette on the. Yeah, uh, so it will just become <laughs> two dark things with a bluish background. But then you get into the, you know, the, the the darker, the blue hours, and uh, you know that's again something to play with. You can you, with your camera, you know, that's when you can start really doing long exposure, yeah. starting really around with white balance. Exactly, and, you know, you can you can change things dramatically. Yeah. And it, like you said about you no, know, when people see photos and then they ask you have your photos shopped it and things like that there. There, there's there's two sides that what we see with our eye is not what the camera sees mm. so there's always some sort of processing the, the camera is not doesn't absorb light like yeah. our eye it doesn't doesn't take in the, 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 the range that our eye does so playing with that 
very rarely are you going to get something that you're icing yeah um regardless of what yeah, you do yeah the, it, every camera processes it completely different exactly. as well yeah. like uh canon's got different color profiles and nikon and sony or whatever so it's at, at what point is it like really processing you know what i mean is it like right. nowadays you got luminar right sky replacement i think that's like that's like really processing well yeah completely uh, altering it's, it's, an image yeah, it's so, um, like, there, there's a place for it yeah right? absolutely it's, uh, but to me you have to be honest about it yeah 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 you, you have to you know if you're starting to replace sky even if it's your sky a different sky from a different time that you took if you're doing that Whoa, then, oh, our oh, drinks are sliding <laughs> walking um i just so you know that's going to sound like an earthquake yeah, on the, on the podcast sure. so, so there is no earthquake just a bottle uh I'll pick it up and hold it the yeah the 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 processing of that is fine whenever you're using photography as an art form. Mm -hmm. um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that there. You know, there is people who just want to take snaps, yep. just out for the family things, not there. But even going into wedding photography. That's all altered. Nobody, no, majority of people do not want you to send them their photos of what they actually yeah, look like. exactly. Uh, they usually spend a lot of money to look like something they don't look like. Yeah. And in a similar way, we can do that, but our subjects are never asking us to do it yeah, we're yeah. just doing it for them yeah, so we're, for we're, we're <laughs> they don't we're, pay either we're altering it or you no know, some of the landscapes are the wildlife stuff you're doing and it doesn't really need processing that way because but some of them you do try and do a bit of a background change or you know, you know just refocus the background mm -hmm. if it's if it's if it's not what you want but with the landscapes like, it really it's cre it's creating art you know yeah. um of course, it's photography. It's it's using what is there, yep. but it's no different to an artist sitting, you know, with a with either a photo or sitting by a beach like this, painting what they're seeing mm -hmm. and giving their translation on it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so it's, it's it's to me it's very similar. And it's it's it's, it's storytelling yep. through through pictures. And I, I I enjoy the processing once I get home almost just as much as the adventure. Not quite as much as the adventure, but like I like to sit there. There's a pelican. Oh, nice! <laughs> like, see it? Yeah. <clears throat> We got pelicans. We've oh, got a yeah. pelican. That's the first pelican of the year. That's pretty cool. Nice. I want a photo of that. Oh. Oh, well, get the Sam zoom. Just quick. Oh yeah. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I ain't gonna. Oh. Just... Sorry, folks. That's the first pelican of the year. Facebook and Matthew. Facebook and Matthew. Oh. What a fantastic photo. Where is it? All right. Wow, some action finally. <laughs> oh. I don't. I don't know. I'm all uh, flustered by the the action out in the water now. I hope hope the waves aren't putting anyone to sleep neither, because it's uh, pretty relaxing out here. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. First pelican of the year. Yeah, sweet. Good spot, Nick. <laughs> yeah. I'm pointing the wrong direction here. Yeah. I should be pointing over there. Um, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Where, where were we at? What were we talking about? Uh, <laughs> where land, we, landscape where, photography. Where we start now? Should be talking about birds now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we're, we're wrong. Wrong podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know, like what's some of the your favorite gear for? Uh, I think the number one thing to start with. Everyone goes right to the wide angle for sure. Wide yeah. angle, for the most part, is your first lens. Yeah, well, again, it, it, it's good. You want you want something wide. It doesn't have to be super wide. No. Uh, you know, with a, like your the, kit, like a kit lens. Kit. The wide end is like plenty wide for ninety yeah. percent of your I, I, shots. And, yeah, getting into it, you don't have to go. Um, obviously, the ones that we use, we're using the f two point eight. So, whenever you're talking about the f number on a, on a lens, the lower that number, the more light you can bring in without distorting the picture or trying to, and that means you can shoot darker, yep. um, darker scenes with better light. Um, but yeah, the yeah. So I wouldn't be without like I've on now I've got. What? It's uh, going for a landing again. Oh, what? it's just going after a bird. Sorry, he's very distracting. This pelican. It's. <laughs> yeah, this is really exciting. Uh, I wish you had a different lens on your camera there. Would <laughs> yeah. zoom in on that. Huh? Pretty cool. He's eating a fish. Awesome. You getting this page? Video? Get some video. <laughs> this is like this is what it's all about yeah. though. This is like uh like for example, we'd be out today shooting the sunset and then uh oh pelican lands yeah. and you're you never know what you're shooting. That's more or less why we're into landscape. We're in all the genres right. kind of that involve the outdoors because uh 
moments like that, exactly. you never know. It's perfect. That, so talking about gear, typically then that's why we carry two cameras around yep. with us. Um, you know, we've got, I'll have a setup. So this is, this is a full frame, which means it's getting more in information than your regular, you know, your crop sensor, which yeah. is... Your sensor's larger. Yeah, so shooting the landscape, you want that there, and a, a wide lens that gives you, you know, as much space to, mm. to capture as possible, but you don't always need that. So yeah. you, you want a lens with not necessarily a prime that's stuck out, you know, a certain number. So this, this one's 16 to 35, so we've got 16 millimeter to 35, which is good, but even that the 24 to 105 that I use, mm. it's an F4, so it's not really great for you know darker skies but some like sunset not there it's yeah, great yeah um you're and gonna a 24 millimeter you're still fine lots perfect. yeah um and then 105 and it's f4 right through the hole mm -hmm. where you get some of these other lenses that usually your kit lenses don't allow you that much light or the it's variable whenever you get the your 100 yeah, like 3.5 to 5.6 yeah. or whatever so you're even though that only sounds like a small jump jump in number substantial it's a, it's a substantial <laughs> oh, yeah. amount of light that you're losing yep so yeah, yeah, it's like I said, it's us having a couple of camera bodies on us now, and we're not trying to put people off by being gear hungry, but when you get to a certain level, that you need. So we've got got the crop sensor that actually brings in even mm -hmm. s closer. So if I've got 600 mil on it, it's like 900 millimeter, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, whatever the crop factor of the camera yeah. is. So I believe like APS-C is 1.5. So if you have 500, you times it by 1.5. Right. And you, so that yeah. adds on an extra 250 millimeters. Yeah. Um, but you have problems with light then. Yeah, that's, then you're that's, losing your large sensor yeah, advantages. Yeah, so the, you know, there's always pros and cons yep. and stuff until you get to the point where there's you, you spend as much money as possible and there's all pros, <laughs> yeah. except yeah. except weight, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's probably, probably the only thing. You got people with wagons hauling all your gear behind yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and once you get lackeys to, to, to follow you around and carry your stuff, that's fine. Yep. But yeah, so the, yeah, you, you got gear, you want, like I said, you've got the same, you know, for the different landscapes and we're starting to hit they have two points yet and lower. Yep. Uh, you, you you want like there there what you say landscape lenses, mm -hmm. um, stuff that you're going to be able to bring in as much light as possible. In um, Astro, it's like the same. You, even go on go one step, you're going into like you're trying to do the primes, like 1.8 or 1.4 primes. You're trying to get into to get as much. That's the whole thing with Astro, as much light as possible, and uh, the shortest amount of time yep. is always the best. Like you, you can't beat that. Where here it's like the sunset, you could be shooting at F20 or F4. Yeah. It really makes no difference. Uh, the thing is, too, you, at, at a certain point, like in a brighter day, you're wanting to shoot at a higher, you know, you're going to you're going to go to F20 just yeah. just, just yeah. to try and create something. Yeah. Um, so you, if you shoot with that full amount of sun, you're getting nothing. Mm -hmm. It's whenever you can tone it down. If you want to start using filters and things, mm -hmm. just to try and sort of dilute the sun's brightness. Mm -hmm. um, and then end up with something and that especially if, you, if you've got somewhere it's a nice scene uh so everything's nice about it except the sun then it's up to you and control the camera to yep. try and work that to, to your advantage yep. um same with the lenses though it's like like right now it's a perfect example you don't want to just like say you want to get that lighthouse way out in the distance there you don't want to use your wide angle right because like you'll never see the lighthouse on the uh in your image, right? It'll just be a little speck. Right. You can use, you can even use a telephoto for landscapes. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. It's uh, it's using the tools you have. Now, you're not going to be able to use your telephoto for... A waterfall uh, or something. Yeah, yeah. Something, something, something that's closer to you, that, that there. But no, you can use it. If you see something far away, and even we have talked about that with some of our other things that we've got sort of planned, we've done before. You know, if you're wanting to put the sun or the moon in front of something, you're wanting to be quite a distance yep. away. Yeah. Uh, and then get, get the moon behind something that's further away so, so it makes it look big that, that's how you, that's how those images that you see with like cities and things in, in behind the sun mm -hmm. that's how they're created they're created from a long distance using telephoto lenses yeah. they're not using a not landscape lens angle. so yeah. it's, it really is a huge learning curve but nobody should be put off with that there mm -hmm. everybody who thinks oh I no, you must have a good camera it's not about having a good camera it's no. quick going out and enjoying yeah, you, hear, it. you hear that all the time yeah. your camera takes great photos yeah, like, it, oh yeah it does it, yeah <laughs> exactly it doesn't just somebody who knows how to use it as well that's like it reminds me of uh you no know, if somebody ever says that yeah and you're at their house and uh they've made you dinner yeah just tell them their pots made some great <laughs> fantastic food today. yeah your oven does great yeah, work yeah. yeah yeah your oven's fantastic i'd <laughs> say how oh, it's delicious so it's the same it's, it's that, exactly that, the same it's, it's using yeah. the kit that you've got and learning how to use it yeah um you know, most of these things aren't going to do it in automatic uh or if they do it's 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 not it's not the kind of image that you're mm. trying to create you're missing out on something every time you use auto pretty yeah. well but yeah, there's 
again, you're going back and forth with the, with the, with the kit. You know, you need a good tripod. Um, you're not really going to be shooting a lot of landscapes mm-hmm. freehand. No. During the day, you will, yeah. you know, you, you can. But um, when we're talking sunrises, sunsets, because you're, you're lo- using the, the first bit of light and the last bit of light, mm-hmm. that's when your, your exposure is going to get slightly longer. Uh, and I personally am not good hand-holding really a lot of images, but... If you're always going to get a better image with a tripod, use a tripod. Yeah. No, there's no, it's, it's, it's a, there's no shame in it. It's not. No, it's, it's, it's no. a tool to have uh, as part of your. And it does exactly what it does perfectly. Yeah, exactly. And don't, yeah. Another thing too, it's like don't get uh, like caught up and spend thousand dollars on tripod. It's like no. yeah, like it's, uh, it's crazy, crazy. Three, three legs, cold things stable. That's, yeah. That's all yeah. you're going for. Um, yeah. So you, you've got in this area. So we're 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 in Essex County, the flattest county. Sort of yeah, east of the prairies. Everyone, no, I, I don't know. Have you been to Saskatchewan? No. Everyone complains about Saskatchewan being flat. When you drive through, it's like kind of like nice rolling hills, well, okay. right? Here's way flatter, oh, way really? more boring. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I say yeah, I'm good, but no, you hear about the prairies. It's, oh, there's nothing to see except the farm field. Yeah, your but, dog uh, can run for miles. And you see it. <laughs> still, it's still going. It's okay. But yeah, the, the down here, we still can create great images. Oh yeah. Oh. So, We've got a coastline. We're surrounded. Mm-hmm. We're pretty much a peninsula. We've got a coastline right around us. So you got nice sunrises, sunsets, uh, and you can see quite a distance. So the, the horizon, you can pretty much set up anywhere mm-hmm. and find a nice horizon line to, to take a, a sunrise from, um, and have something in the back, some nice light. Uh, there, there's lots of little rivers and creeks and things running through. There's some nice farm buildings. There, you know, there, 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 there's always something. Mm-hmm. You can always find something. Uh, so, saying this area isn't that nice. It's not nice. It's nice as a nice mountain view, or you know the it's Niagara escarpment. You know, yeah. exactly. Get creative. You, know, you use what you've got. Um, some of the man-made stuff is nice. You know, it mightn't be your thing, but mm-hmm. for me, I'm happy enough to use some of the man-made things as sort of props in, in my, my my images, mm-hmm. as I am to use natural stuff. Uh, you know, the, the part of that is the beauty. You know, like some old farm buildings, some barns. You know, uh, some some of the even like hydro pylons, the wind turbines. You know, sometimes they go, like, yes, they're they're here. There's not much we're doing about them as far as you now. Might as well use them to our benefit. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we can't we can't take them away. They're not. They're going to leave those turbines spinning to the fall to pieces, which is yeah. pretty soon. But yeah, there's there's there's. There's something to be had everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, can, we can create images. We can go out anywhere in Essex County and find something equally as nice or creative or you can create something mm-hmm. here as you can anywhere else. You know, there's, there's stuff everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then you got people that come here from other places, right? And they love it here because the Great Lakes are... Right. They're, they are great. <laughs> like, uh, we're, And we're surrounded by them. Might as well use them for sure. And take advantage of all the coastline because yeah saskatchewan and stuff like that you don't have lakes like this it's it's pretty amazing the lake we're sitting by a great lake right now it's yeah, so we're, cool. yeah we're right by lake erie here uh just going into the mouth of detroit river you know detroit river is not a big river but what's fascinating too is them watching the freighters go by yeah like these boats look tiny yep. and then as soon as they get to the mouth of that river massive <laughs> huge like the oh, and that that's i love getting images with the freighters in it mm. because all of a sudden, like I said, these things just go from being small. They don't even create much of a wake or a wave, but things are huge. They're <laughs> yeah. monsters, and they fill up the channel. You mm-hmm. go, wow. No. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so the, uh, oh, there, there's, there, there's so much to take advantage of. If you want to go out and take landscape images, uh, you know, not necessarily pure landscapes where it's just like a nice rolling hill, mm-hmm. maybe a farm building. Mm-hmm. Whatever Whatever's in your, from the horizon to you, you know, to me, that's landscape. You know, that's yeah. You know, yep. Uh, yeah. So, getting getting them images like that is in your control. You know, and be artistic with them. You know, don't 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 try and see an image that you've seen somebody else. Think I want that. Mm-hmm. You know, go and create your own. There there is elements where, like Niagara Falls. We went to Niagara Falls. Part of one and seen a yep. few Ni- falls a while ago. You're really not going to get something a whole lot different, but it's still awesome to get just sit and play around with that. Yep. Just play with the light for a while. Play with the water. Just. Something's not, it's really not going to be a whole lot different, but it's just your take on it's it. It's got to you know. be the most photographed thing on the planet. Oh, I, pretty, I wonder yeah. what it, it's got to be up there. Has to be. Yeah, I wonder if you can actually Google that. What's <laughs> the most photographed thing ever? Oh, hmm. maybe upload it. You can probably find that in Google, but what we oh, got? Fish. fish. Fish is like trying fish to beach itself in. now. Huh. Oh, yeah. oh, that's trying to get away from the pelican. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's 
yeah, we, we, we can, you can go on about this all day. And when we're out doing things, you're always going to have something else you can point to somebody else. And that, that's what's interesting sometimes with those photo walks. People yep. go on a photo walk. Somebody sees something totally different. Oh, yeah. Uh, Every time. It's you know, crazy. So you're, Everybody's pointing this direction. There's that one person, usually called Jerry, uh, <laughs> pointing a different direction. Yeah. Hey? yeah. Right? There's just, there's, no, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's actually, it's, it's good. You know, yeah. I wish uh, I could. It's yeah. like, I, I don't know if I've gotten picky or like, I don't know what it is. I think it's because like uh, my partial retirement of the only working the so, yeah, week yeah, now. It's like, uh, I used to go up to like Algonquin and it, it, you almost felt pressured that you're up there and you had to. Right. You had to take the pictures, yeah. right? And now it's like I go up. It's like some some weeks we'll go up and don't even take a picture, which right. I don't know if that's good or bad yet. Haven't really figured it out, but uh, oh, well, I think part of it for us too is we're out there to enjoy ourselves, right? Yeah, it's, true. We're, we're we're naturalists in that in that sense that we we just like being in nature. Yep. Uh, the photography then is our, our sort of next passion and what we typically do. So when mm-hmm. we see someone, want to get images of it. Oh, it's got some ducks now. What ducks? we got over there? Can't I can barely see the one. Oh. Uh, Golden eye? No, no, merganser. Yeah, yeah. Common yeah, merganser, yeah, yeah, pair yeah. of common merganser. Oh. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we'll go out and enjoy it. So like, there isn't that pressure to get the image. The, there will be all of a sudden want to take some sort of photo, some, you know, and with the cell phones, that's where it's good. That We'd have the, all the setup. Some of the stuff you can quickly get. Mm-hmm. Like, when we were up, was it the fall or the summer, we got all the, the mushrooms? Uh, summer. summer. With kale, yeah. So the summer trip went up, and... We had gone up for Astro, really. We wanted to do some really night sky stuff. What we had planned didn't work out. Mm-hmm. But next month we stumbled upon all these mushrooms. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a fairy tale. That's yeah, the was the weirdest thing I've ever h- seen. Hundreds of varieties of mushrooms all of a sudden. just like that You wasn't, couldn't even do a step without stepping on one. So the cell phones were coming out. And we are getting just as good images as what we wanted. Now, I will say that if we started doing macro photography, yeah. we would have then set up for that definitely. Oh, yeah, so yeah. that's, again, another set of lenses and, and things. And you're going to get a whole lot better images. But for what we were doing, like just our initial first time ever photographing mushrooms, mm-hmm. was, oh, they get the fungi, you know. And that I, I enjoyed that as much, mm-hmm. and that was fun. But then the UV light at night time, oh yeah, some was, of these ones cool glowing too. in the dark. So it, 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 that was good. Uh, it was interesting to get out there and do that. Oh, is it sunset? Is That's the sun's it, gone. Eh? It's already so, gone. So we're probably thing? dark, eh? We're yeah. a couple, just a couple of shadows. So I think well, we, well, we pretty much covered yeah. anything else you wanted to touch on. I think that's it. Sun has set it. Or is the sun has set? Is that the right word? Set sun has set. Sun, has, sun set. has set. Yeah, that's it. We'll go with that. Yeah, if you're following me for a grammar or <laughs> anything like that, you're going to be pretty yeah, wrong person. Yeah. Dude, if, I'm going to blame. If you ever see any of our write ups running and there's grammatical mistakes, I'm blaming Nick. Yeah. Even though yeah, he makes sure. me do them. Yeah. I, for I, sure. I, was, I was just going to say it was Nick did it. Yeah, I'll look like a caveman wrote it if I uh, had anything to do with it. So. <laughs> So, yeah, that's, again, any questions about landscape photography, and if you've got any questions about gear or things you might need, the email address is ramble.2to.us at gmail.com. It's a bit complicated. It is in the show notes, so if you're watching YouTube, just click the little arrow, drop down, it'll have it there. On Spotify, it has it in the description. Mm-hmm. Um, get in contact with us. You can send us your pictures. If you're out there doing landscape, if you've seen a nice sunset, Send us your photos. We'll show them on the show. Part of the show, once we get sort of really rolling, we're going to have a segment where we show your photos, and we're going to have actually some competitions and things where we want you to get involved and hopefully um, get feedback from you about what you're seeing, what you're doing, whether that be landscapes or nature, or just wildlife photos. But for now, keep in contact. Send us send us your messages, and we'll hopefully touch on things that you ask us as well throughout the shows. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we've got a, a handful of people lined up to interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, thankfully, a lot of people have actually fall, sort of volunteered to jump on the board yeah. to get the, an interview done, um, which makes it a lot easier on us because we let them ramble. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we appreciate uh, the following so far. We know things are getting going, and some of the feedback we're getting is positive, but we really do encourage you to connect with us because it really is a local show. We want to connect people to this area. and what you're seeing, what you're doing. Like, we got a random pelican spotting tonight. Hopefully, you can do the same. Uh, you know, send us a picture. If something flies in your backyard if you're out for a walk and you see something and you're able to get a photo, send it to us. We'll be happy to see it, help you identify things, um, as well as the, the trees and shrubs and things that are starting to sprout. So, yeah, I think, I think we've 
Think Pretty much uh, it's got a knock on the head for the night. Cold so again. <laughs> getting, getting nippy, you get packed up and get put away here. Yeah. So uh, it'll be a goodbye from Nick. And a goodbye from Donnie. Goodbye. Goodbye.